We're doing a vote review of our fellow Cypher from our community that is Diamond Free, Mr. Creed. He sent us uh, attacking half of Lotus. And we're going to see how that goes. Can we go see this one? This goes here. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, fine. Okay. So the call is to go see him. He's playing Cypher. So his job... Wait, you have Cypher in chamber. Okay. Oh, this is a nice spot. This is a nice, nice spot. Uh, Riz, can you need bend? That was a very place. close to uh, actually being the, jumpable, uh, by the way, that trap. Uh, right side, uh, so uh, you're going uh, with yeah, the team. Okay. Remember, I'm going to be giving my own perspective on this, right? I'm not saying this is going to be correct. It's going to be my perspective. They're taking aim and control. Fast can achieve. Let's see how we play this. Flank the Arab. Oh, right side, right side. Cage trigger. CT. Uh, I, mm, I like this. The way you played it was pretty smooth. It was very, very nicely done. The problem is, you're fucked. No, th this was, this was well played. Uh, you had a plan. You know, you went with the team. You checked mid one time and good timing to see if someone is pushing B. Um, the problem is that if someone was pushing B, you had no no plan. You had no plan to actually stop him, right? He's gonna get spotted. So if he's not gonna get scared away from the camera and like if you're gonna miss the tag or something, then he's gonna push through spawn and you have to commit to site anyway. But you're gonna have the info, but no one will act on it, right? So that's one of the issues. But I do think you played it well by going onto site and by pushing CT. I like the cipher, cage, the cipher cage that you did. The only problem I see here, and that's something that you can think about. Um, when you do this cipher cage or smoke, so this, this applies to anything with a smoke, right? If you are going into this and you're in a position like this, most people are hugging the left side of the wall in a smoke. So when someone holds you, they're going to anticipate a player exactly in this position right here so it makes sense when you're in positions like that when you want to peek through the smoke to not peek by hugging the wall because that's the most anticipated position yes, tell me what you've learned cypher oh sorry i meant us please tell us mm. Oh, I mean, eco kill you. Cam use karunga. Aha, take it again. Kill this low aim in the show. Yes, I have a raise need. That's true. He was like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> No trips for eco? Yeah, you you told that to, to your teammates, right? If you told that in your language, that's fine. I mean, mid pe flash hua tha na? Good job. No right clicks. Only left clicks with a classic. Well done. Now, play passively to get kills. You pushing out here kills you. See, that's exactly. So. This right here, I know it's not important because it's an eco, it's 1v3, right? But to some degree, you can build up your own economy and also damage the economy even more massively if you play more greedy. Look at the amount of time you have, right? You have a 1 minute and 13. You know that there are two players pushing in spawn or even three. Two? Wait, let me check again. So you know about two players. So the moment you check that camera and I see your position right here, right? I'm like, play passive. Don't run out here because your gun doesn't benefit you because right now you're going to have two angles that you're going to have to hold. But if you're going to just stay in this angle over here, you maximize or minimize uh, the, uh, the angles that you have to hold and those motherfuckers will push you. So you're going to have a chance at getting one additional kill when they will swing from those angles into you, right? And getting any kills or any hits is um, is important right here. But if you step out of your zone with this gun right here, you're fucked. Like, there's no way you're going to do anything because you're going to get flanked from the left side. Like, it just happened, right? And you are like, oh, okay, well, unless I'm going to have a lucky flick, I'm dead. 
Being patient gets you a long way in this game. Like, you don't have to be always aggressive. That omen died because he did what you did. Right? Think about it this way. You punish the omen for making a stupid play. I push for Reyna until I reach this move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you push for Reyna, but you saw the Sage on the left side of Reyna. So you can anticipate that the Sage is gonna push you because those motherfuckers always push. Right? So in this case, you can maximize the chance of getting value. Oh, well, you know what to do. I don't need to tell you what you did wrong here. <laughs> I'm holding it. Needing, needing. Yeah. Hug your corner here. Hug your corner. That's something. Okay, this map is very specific. I will show you something. On this map, you have se several corners that are so deep, people are not accustomed to it. Look at the distance. Six meters, right? This is a really deep corner. When people check corners like this, they're very, very lazy. They're like very, very fucking lazy. So you're going to get free kills just because you hug this corner so much because they don't anticipate people hiding the corners. Even better example is this one here. This one is like way longer. This is like seven meters here, right? And then like a few meters over here as well. So when you're standing in this corner, people always make the same mistake by lazy checking it, like being like this, you know? And they're like, oh, clear. And then you're sitting in the fucking far corner. Like, it's those corners are so deep, people are typically too lazy to check them. You know? The same goes for this one. Right here. This one is even fucking longer. But the problem with this corner is that people are going like here, and they can actually, like, if they go close to the wall, they're fucked because they're looking here. But if they go close to the corner here, then can actually swing like this because they're not exposed to the left. But this corner... And this corner on the left is very beneficial if you hug it and just hide there. No, don't run! Okay, so here, right here, you could have just died. You have no, I you have no idea if they are both there. I would not trust even if they were my teammate would say both there. I would not trust it. Right here, you expose yourself to the B push potentially or a B like safe player because it's two v five. They might be actually saving, right? So right here, when you run like this, you expose yourself and you can get killed. You didn't even check if someone is on the right. No, 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 no. Kill him, kill him, kill him, go, 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 go. Yes, this is gonna be on YouTube. Just in case, case that long. One enemy remaining. See? See? Look at this. The chamber killed the race. So the race was coming from either B or from A. That means that you were close to dying. In that moment when I when I spoke about it. <coughs> that wasn't me. This is jumpable, by the way, again, again. from the ang from uh, the stairs. Look. Right here, you jump for that. Let me check something. It's just way better to just put it here. You know? Just put it here. Did they change something? Oh, they can jump it from here. Ooh. Wait. Am I stupid? If it's on your head level, like this, it's not jumpable, right? But there's a highway here, so you can actually... If you're very agile, you can maybe jump through it here. This is tough, man. This is tough in this position. 
What are the trips, trips here that will be better for you to make to not be jumpable at all? This is all jumpable. That is tough. That is actually pretty tough. I'll probably still go for this one here. Like, just put it over here. Like, this is, this is, this is probably the best. Do it here. And now a person cannot jump through here. Right? And the person from stairs cannot jump it as well. So, this, this is, this is the best position to make sure that you're not being flanked from this, from this angle. Yeah. But the way you put it right here, uh, is fully jumpable. And also this one here that you did here on B is fully jumpable as well, right? The problem is that right here, like, actually, if you put it like this, it's not jumpable, right? You put it like this, uh, a little bit more actually. So you put it like in the middle, hello? Hello? What the fuck? That's a weird bug. Um, if you put it like here, then it's not jumpable because a person gets tagged when he jumps on the box, maybe a little bit more to the left, and can jump over it here as well. So now you're not flankable from B. Ronald, guys, I don't play Cypher, so this is literally me just trying out shit. I would have probably, um, if this is you playing with your friends. I'll probably communicate that Cypher Cage will be f uh, holding this. Um, <clears throat> I would say the jet jet smoke is way more valuable for uh, for her initiating on site. So your Cypher Cage in this position would be more valuable. But that's like very nitpicky. One up, up. Cage triggered. Cage triggered. Oh, close city, close city. One city. Oh, that push. Oh. oh, God. Oh, okay. Well, you can't really do anything about that. So, in this position here, like, if your jet ever dies by standing like that stupidly, like, didn't even shoot, right? And didn't give comms to the race as well. Like, every single one of you stood in a bad position. Like, no one can help each other, right? So, in this, in this round, let's, like, pay attention to this. Jet holds alone the exit from up. Race holds alone exit from link. You hold not the exit, but you hold the actual retake. Right, because this is the angle when the retake starts. So your 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 position is very deep. It's too deep because it depends on the positions of your teammates. Like you cannot help this player, you cannot help this player. And if this player dies, you're fucked from Link. And if you die, sorry, the player here can die because you don't hold deep, right? So the omen or whatever will be coming from CT can stand here behind the wall, shoot this guy, and you will not even know. And then it depends on you trading that person by peeking, right? So your first instinct to be aggro on CT, let's watch it again. Right here, it's 5v3, right? Close CT, close CT. You know that the omen's coming from CT. Your instinct to hide here is fine. But now, like, I would, I would really advise to um to depending now if you're playing a five stack or solo in solo queue i would definitely fall back towards b main even with this 30 hp i would just slowly slowly fall back right maybe ask the omen for a smoke if you play with a five stack or with like 
um, just your friends, exactly. then you need to, then you need in this case, be a little bit more aggro, call the ult on the fucking race, push them away because your positioning is bad. Like you need to, all of you need to either reposition or push together, you know? So like call the race, push together here, you know, pop the fucking ultimate or something, you know? Hey Afina, thank you so much for the Prime. Thank you so much for the two months. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, but in general, I wouldn't say you played badly. You just put yourself in a position when you depend on your teammates, and that's terrible. <laughs> you know? I need to so you put a little bit deeper to avoid being destroyed by the race grenade. That's fine. Okay. That's nice. Put it higher though. Put it higher though, because you're not checking mount. What is the highest position you can put it at? You want to see over the mound. Right? If you put it here, you're not gonna see shit. Can you put it even higher? Probably not. But yeah, if this is the highest point... This is the highest point over here, right? So, this gives you a little bit more info. Because... You're gonna be late with this camera. Someone will be able, see. Someone will be able to go behind the uh, behind the mound. Could be there. Could be there. Take a deep in. Door hole, na? Reloading. I'll walk in. This trap here is like completely not needed. You can, you can, say, because your chamber is still on long, right? And you have a chamber trap there as well. And no one pushed you from A. So this trap that you put on, on rotating doors really doesn't give you much. If you are like this type of aggressive cypher that I see you play, you can consider using one of your trap trips to like put it on side when you push with the cypher cages. I like, I actually really like the way you utilize the cameras in this round. Like this is very good. Uh, wall, wall, 142, 142, 142. Uh, yeah, this is. I feel like you were a little bit, a little bit too anxious because you you make a really good initiation for the race. Look, look at this. You put the camera. You know where the player is, right? And now this, and then how the race is gonna go. And now when you see this, the race satcheling in, you should follow. But instead, you hide the corner and you're al you're going for the cipher cage. This cipher cage is definitely not needed, and you should just be pushing in with that race because if that race doesn't get traded, you're fucked. And that's what uh, literally what happens. See? Also, remember, you don't always have to do long cages. That's something that many people forget actually, because what what happens? You played with with your muscle memory. Your, when you when you were attacking from this position, right? Over here, your you typically would do this, right? You do the cipher cage over here so you can cross. But the thing is, you can also consider short cages so you're more efficient. Like this is also a really good cage to attack. You know? It's like you just cut the corners, essentially, right? You can be way more effective by just doing this as well. Like, they don't have to be perfect. Your cages are like jet smokes. They don't have to be fucking perfect, right? This cam was instead of prevent crossing in the first place. Oh, I can guarantee you that with the cam that you use on long, you, you could have crossed to Mond. Like, 100%. <laughs> mm. Sucks to have no initiators? No, it doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't matter. Okay. 
एक इंच कम लेना पड़ेगा That's Lady Knight. Must be. ये जगह स्टिंगल ले रहा है कि स्लैटशी ले लो तो एडवांटेज मिलेगा। सेवेंटी 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 सेव
and you're like worried about being spotted, right? So there are two mistakes here. One, you're just very lazy peeking. The way you peeked, I'll show you. That's something that many people, including me sometimes, uh, do the same mistake. When you're peeking like this, right? You're just doing it very lazily. Like you shift into it. Like for, against me, that's a nemesis. I cannot fucking kill people that do this. But most people can. I don't know how. But they do. So when you shift peek like this, it's very lazy because you're just so slow, right? You always try to like maximize your swings by not doing noise as well, right? But you can swing the corner without making noise. You just need to practice the distance that you can do this without making footsteps, right? Look. And then you maximize your speed while doing that without making any noise. But also the second thing is, again, you dry peeking in into a site that you have no info about, right? So option, camera, or option, this. And when you attack like this, consider even using your cypher cage to give you an advantage while, clear, uh, while cutting corners. So for example, if you're going from here, a cage like this, benefits you to check this corner first check this corner and then swing like this right because if you would if you would just cage like this then you need to peek out of the fucking cage into the unknown but when you are going in while giving yourself an advantage right like this you can check corners you can slice it and you check everything and you get also info if someone is standing here if it's caught by the cage Right? Remember also that you can use this to an advantage. I don't know about any lineups over here, but you can definitely try it out. Oh, never mind. Wait. Yeah, this jumps down. Not the best example because it lands here, but maybe it's possible for it to land over here or here or here. Maybe even here, right? No. Anyway, my point is, you can practice this shit. Maybe you'll find something useful for yourself. Oh, this one is not bad. Yeah, you can definitely figure out something. But if I go like this, I will definitely use a cage that allows me to do this. And sneak onto the side and slice the corners and get more info. Dry peeking again will fool you till my friend. You know they have an operator, right? So all of this dry peeking that you do can really cost you badly. If you don't plan on using the uh, camera for yourself here on A, leave it on Beam, leave it on, on Spawn somewhere. Always try to, like, maximize the usage of the utility. And again here, you made a lazy peek. Look. See? You were, you were doing, like, semi-good swings here, but then when it's more import most important, you actually do the, the very lazy peek. So you lose, you lose the momentum and you cannot go back as well. Because you're not ready for this gunfight. So the same thing. One should never dry peek? I'm not saying you should never dry peek, but... You know that there's an operator... Somewhere on the map. And you are a character that can give yourself info. So it would be beneficial ah. to get that information. To get those informations. Okay, which gun to fix this time? Well, not so bad. We're gonna argue yes. that. Yeah, this it's so funny that we covered this because you can jump over this this trap. You can definitely jump over this trap going from B if you have good movement. Uh, oh, Danny, you can type an exclamation mark DX. I think that was the comment. 
I can give you more info after I do the overview, if I have finished it. Oh my god, your jet has the fucking spike. See, this is like, again, same same thing with the height of the of the cage, uh, height of the camera. Do it higher. But also, second thing is like, you don't utilize your camera close enough to the maximum uh, while playing this. Like, if I would be playing Cypher on Lotus right here, my default would probably be on attack, right? My default on attack would have been most likely... Well, exactly this camera over here, right? I would start the round by putting this camera over here, right? And then... Uh, and then uh, put probably before starting the round, put one trap over here, right? Oh, fucking epic pen. Because informations are so valuable on attack, I would probably, my setup would probably be like this. Put a trap over here. Put a trap over here, right? Dude, I am being pissy right now because of the epic pen. Right, so those two traps. And then I start the round by putting the camera over here. So I start by controlling the every single three lanes, and I get the early info if there's a player over here. Because right now you just like kind of half acid, you know? Like this camera could have saved the chambers live, but also you would have gotten the info maybe for him to take the gunfight if he had an operator, right? Or maybe you could play it off, it off yourself. The, the advantage of, of Cypher is that you could reposition on your left, you just whiffed. Unlucky. Um, uh, the, 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 the biggest advantage of, of Cypher is the fact that you can reposition your utility every single time. It makes you so flexible, right? You can start with some defaults and then always reposition the utility if, if you want to change your plan. I'm also not the same. My cam utilization is very low. Yeah, right. You seem to be. Look, typically, typically, when you're starting the round, you're almost at the barrier drop, and you still didn't put a, a plan into your mind. So I would advise you on every map to find a default attacking plan for yourself that you always start with, even if you don't have a plan, right? So you know what to do at the beginning of the round. Like, the one that I just showed you on Lotus here is fine for, like, almost every start of the round. And if you want to do something different, then you can make that plan beforehand or during that option, and if not, then you can always fall back on this one okay. to be effective. Cross left side. Again, around with all of the camera, right? You will not kill my ally. Spike down A. I saw you. It is I like the camera here, but it again could have been utilized earlier, right? Two K one still cage active here, right? Look, what are you looking at right now? This is the biggest problem here. You're busy probably looking at the minimap or something, right? But you make noise so the opponents know about your position, and you right now looking at the wall. You should 100% look here, not because there's an opponent. Even if there's no opponent over here, you should be always looking in this direction because Rays is already holding this direction. There's no way that an opponent was going to be from B main, 
because of you already have seen info about Sage and Omen, right? And you have a trap on B main as well. So the only position that your opponent can be at right now is A side, top side B, B link, and CT. Those are the possibilities, right? So when you're going after your, your race, your crosser should be always in this position because your teammate was always looking in this position and you cannot help him. We know more than we did before. Let's use that. Need a drop. I need this. Thanks. Yes, this should do. Guys, don't don't um Don't be toxic towards each other, my friends. Skywalker and Shadow Dash. Let's see what you do here. Okay, say no about the wall. Okay, I like the reaction very fast. Camera to check one corner. It's pretty good. You can recall it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. But now you're hesitant. What are you waiting for? Okay, you're pushing in. I like this. Go, 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 go. Oh, that's that's that. Yeah. See, that's that's something. So at least we know what to fix. This is something that you battled before. When I when I was speaking about the entrance on B after the race satchels, if you remember, you were going onto this side. You were going onto this side when the race was satcheling and you hid in this corner, and then you did this cipher cage when there was a smoke over here, right? Right here. What you did, you wanted to do the perfect cages, right? Race blocking doesn't matter, because that's not, that's not the issue. Our Cypher died because he peeked into this corner and wanted to do this, the perfect Cypher cage, like this. Like a normal smoke, like a brimstone smoke or an omen smoke. You don't need that, right? You're playing a Stinger. You can again... Yeah, fuck me. You can just do aggressive fucking Cypher cages and just go in extend your and extend your entrance to the site you know like you can do just do this and you can just literally cut corners again right look look how can i enter the site by doing this by there's a smoke be main from the opposing omen i do this i activate i go here there's no one here i do cut suffocate here i go here and i can fight here right and i can go follow then into ct swing like Cypher cages up close, specifically when you play Stinger. You like to, it seems like you like to play Stinger, but you're utilizing your cages like you're playing rifles, and you're just overpeaking this by being totally exposed to it, right? Force of habit for yourself, like, force to build a habit, sorry. Force to build a habit to build um, those cages that are allowing you to essentially go and create space, right? So... This is the set. By the way, this is the same purpose. I'm leaving a, a corridor on my left. It's the same when I'm entering over here. I leave a corridor for myself on the left so I can check corners more freely, right? Outside of it. Because if I do the smoke like this, then I have to commit, right? Without knowing anything. But if I do the, the cipher cage on the right and I leave a corner for myself, I'm able to either explode through the smoke very close but then i'm exposed to multiple angles or check like again check the angles over here like this or explode maybe like this or just go here do another side of cage and go here and then be in other positions that allow me to do another like angle check and so on you know you literally just copy how jet plays and that's also how how we can play with omen by the way Just, just remove this idea. From, remove the idea from your mind that your cipher cages have to be long range and in perfect positioning. Build a habit of using the cipher cages for yourself as aggressive combat smokes. Maybe I'm. Maybe me. You're not a smoker. You're, you're trying to limit the amount of angles that you're exposed to when you're attacking. 
My rank games, I had a cipher was going like this with cages and shorty towards enemy. I mean, it's a good play. You can do that with Bucky, with Judge, Stinger, with Phantom as well. It just depends on the way you play it, but it's definitely something that it can buy you space. Uh, crystal uh, placement. Uh, uh, what, what are you doing right now? Look, look at your crystal placement. I'm not sure what you're doing. Maybe you're looking at the minimap or something. But right now you're totally exposed to CT. No one checked it, and you're looking underground. Ah, because you're preparing yourself for a cipher cage. So you're busy thinking what to do with the cipher cage. Next movement. Seventy. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you definitely overstayed your welcome. Right now, this this was planted. Look where it was planted for you on long. And playing aggro here is probably not the play. You can just play from long B safe, and you're gonna win this route by doing that. You sometimes it feels like you're over aggressive when you should not be aggressive. You are, and when you should be aggressive, you are not. Like with the sting in the stinger rounds, in the stinger rounds that I have seen, you're not aggressive enough, and you don't do those suffocages aggressively to take space. But when you play with a rifle, you actually did this several times. I think, maybe not several, but you did it differently in this round, right? So there's a little bit of a mindset um, mindset change that you require here, right? Always think about the objective. Like, is it planted for us on long? Yeah, well, then we can play safe, right? But in general, two things that you need to fix to be more efficient. Have your default setup for attack, right? In my eyes, like, start using this this setup that I showed you on on, on, on spawn. Like, if you're playing, if you're playing Lotus, just try doing this setup with the high camera, right? Literally just this. Do this. So you start the round by doing this trap first, this trap second, and then at the barrier... Fucking epic, man. And then at the barrier, drop that camera, activate it immediately to get the info if someone crossed the mound or if someone is playing into the uh, deep, uh, deep angle over here, right? And if you start defaulting by that, you will build a habit to always have full efficiency. And then when you want to change your plan, you can always either reposition this or build up the idea in that time when you're dead already and think about how you want to change this. All right? So building up a plan before the barrier drops, you need to be more efficient. Two, learning to use your cipher cages more efficiently for yourself as combat smokes and not use it as a brimstone smoke. You are not built for that. You, you over peak because of that. Lazy peaks that you do with the shift killed you twice in this game. And um, always think about the closest angle when you're going forward. Because the round on B when you went after the, after the race and you get killed from the Omen operator here was a very good example of that. I'm very happy that you sent your VOD. I hope you learned a lot. And see you next time.